yield yourself to sin or you can yield yourself to righteousness. But students, you are serving the one you yield to and the one you obey. Uh, Jesus said in Mark 1.15, Repent and believe the gospel. Repentance is not apologizing, saying you're sorry or feeling bad. Repentance is forsaking all known sin. In order for you to turn to Jesus Christ, you must turn away from your sin. In order for me to turn to the back wall, I must turn away from you. In order for me to turn to you, I must turn away from the back wall. In order for you to turn to Jesus Christ, you must turn away from your sin. Acts 20, 21, Paul said, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus never said to come as you are. Jesus said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. If you don't turn from all your sin and turn to Jesus Christ, you will end up in hell. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15, 10. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Nobody's abiding in the love of Jesus Christ if they're not keeping the commandments of God. That's it? 30 seconds. 1 seconds. John 5, 3 says, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. Do you love God? Are you keeping His commandments or are you sinning? Okay, it's very important that we get a concept here. He's talking about repentance as the gospel. The gospel is not repentance. Now listen closely. The gospel is not repentance. The gospel is the person and work of Jesus Christ. Repentance and faith is what we're supposed to believe in and trust in. Turn from ourself and our sin to Christ. But in order to turn to Christ, the message we should be preaching is Christ and Him crucified. This is important. The thing that breaks the heart of the sinner is recognizing your sin killed the Savior. That you are responsible. It's understanding that. Now, on top of that, he talks these verses. Most of these verses are verses concerning sanctification. There are three aspects of all salvation. And that is justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification is to be declared right. To be declared right. How do you get this? Well, you get that by trusting in Christ alone. And then God declares you right. That's found in Romans 4, verses 1. What then shall we say that Abraham our father according to the flesh is found? For if Abraham was justified by action, reform your life and start being good, if he was done by works, he has something to boast about. But not before God. For what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God. Believed God. Trusted completely in God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. That means that God declares us right. When we forsake our sin and turn to Christ and embrace the cross and embrace Jesus, God says, you're right with me. You're righteous. And it's not because of what you did. It's not you. It's faith in what Christ did. And who He is. What He's done. Otherwise, we can all boast and say, I did it! I cleaned myself up! I'm a good man! That's what the passage is saying. Abraham, what? Believed in God. <coughs> Trusted in Christ. Trusted in God as He had been revealed. Justification. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking all about the second step, sanctification. He's never talking about justification. And by the way, I want to let you know, you will never be sanctified unless you're justified. Unless you know that you're right with God, 
you're not going to love the God that saved you. Do you understand? You've got to be right with God first, and then you want to obey Him. And He will deliver you from your sin, as we know from Romans 6, 7, and 8. It's all through it. And he can quote all these verses from that. Read your Bible tonight. Can't get through them all. But folks, it's direction, not perfection. Now listen, it's direction, not perfection. How do we know this? We know this from Romans. Romans 7 says, I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. That's Paul talking in Romans 7, which is in the middle of the sanctification section of Romans. Romans is the gospel. It's the part about now God, after turning and trusting in Christ, now God's setting me apart. But I'm battling my mortal body, my old man. I'm putting it to death constantly. As he says in Romans 8, Otherwise, by the way, if we're completely free from sin, why is there any commandments in the New Testament? Why tell us to stop doing something if we wouldn't do it? Obviously. Confess your sins one to another, right? What does that mean? Confess your sins. Sanctification. All right. You know, Mike talks a lot about this being for disciples, and but the Bible doesn't say anything about that. I'll quote this to you again. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. 1 John 3, 9 doesn't say a mature Christian, a disciple, says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. 1 John 5, 18 says, Whosoever is born of God sinneth not. John 8, 34, Jesus said, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And nobody's talking here about being saved by what you do. I am preaching, and what I preach is that repentance is a condition of salvation. It's what I've always preached. You're not going to be saved unless you turn from your sin. And most of the time, uh, in, in most people in America, including Mike, just gloss right over that. They don't put any emphasis on it. To where, to where people really understand it. Mark chapter 1 verse 15 says, Repent and believe the gospel. Repentance comes before believing. Acts 20, 21 says, Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance come first. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 said, uh, says, Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Now, faith without works is dead. Yes, you're saved by faith. Somebody said, you're saved by faith and faith alone, but the faith that saves is never alone. Faith without works is dead. Acts 15, 9 says that their hearts were purified by faith. Real faith in Jesus Christ will purify your heart. And if your heart's pure, your life will be pure. Romans chapter 3, verse 31 says, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So your faith in Jesus Christ doesn't make God's law void. It causes God's law to be established in your life. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says that faith worketh by love. What is love? 1 John 5 3. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. So the faith that saves is a faith that works by love. And love is keeping the commandments of God. 